Alice, hi, how are you? Hey, I'm good, how are you doing? I'm good, I wanted to ask you, I really, really enjoy your show. I think Chloe's a, a, a incredible work. Um, you know, the first thing I did, obviously, when I had heard about it is I, I checked, I said, is this based on anything? Was this, was this a book? You know, just to try mm. and um, figure out at the beginning. And it's not, it's an original work. So what I like to do in that case is find clues to see <laughs> maybe it's based on, you know, experience or something. Um, and I keep coming back to the line, um, to die by your side is such a heavenly way to die, the Smith's line. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's such a, it's, to me, it's, it's a line you could read very differently if you wanted mm. to. It could be a really serious line, kind of tragic or funny mm. or strange. And your series kind of seems to be all of those things. <laughs> so what's your starting point? Uh, you know, how much do you look to this lyric as sort of a starting point for Chloe? Yeah, that's really interesting. I mean, there were lots of, it, it, there were lots of starting points um, to, to kind of things I was interested in, you know, in inspiration, but things I was in the world and in my life that I was kind of thinking about and trying to trying to talk about. And then um, they come together in, in the premise of Chloe. But the, it's interesting that, you know, that song was in the in the first treatment I think it was there it was always part of the the first idea that's true um and you know it's a it was a you know I I my teenage friendships were inspiration for sure you know um mm. I had some very intense um <laughs> crazy teenage friendships um and it, that was a song as well that you know I uh listened to on a loop when I was 16 or whatever um and it's a very sort of it's a it's a song that is uh he has, has a bears a lot of memories for me right and I think memory and how it relates to uh, your connections with people is an, another thing you see in the show right and so this song and the, the meaning that it holds for Becky and for her friendship with Chloe was so but but it but it was always there it was that that one and I think it's because um yeah I think it's for a couple of reasons one just the personal meaning to me but but also the um, uh the uh the 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 two lyrics actually so there's the to die by your side and then there's there is a light that, will ne that never goes out right yeah that was a a kind of quite there there is a light that never goes out was always a kind of quite almost romantic you know in the way that these early friendships have almost a romance epic romance feel to them that yeah. you know this sense that you're 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 talking to someone and saying you know this is this is the a friendship that will never die or whatever you know um that and then on the on the flip side the to die by your side is such a heavenly way to die which you know it is it's it it has exactly as you say all of those different um edges to it you know it's on one on the one hand you see it in the context of someone dying you think oh my god this is there's something it's kind of dark and 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 scary and you think what the hell has happened here but then on this on on another on on the other hand there is you know I think in all Smith's lyrics are sort of <laughs> you know there's there's a kind of tongue-in-cheekness to it or something that you know all of that's mixed up when you know what happened, but also when you realize, you know, the, the what really happened and why she's, you know, reaching out to her friends, a kind of, yeah, there's a sort of twisted black humor to it all as well, you know? Um, so yeah, that it was, it was there from the very beginning. Um, but I think I also was interested in the character of, Be the character of Becky was, was, you know, very, it, like trying to talk about someone or trying to in, explore someone who uses lies to cover up her insecurities to um uh, as as almost like a um, smoke screen to avoid being seen by anyone because she uh, you know she's kind of got got such a hard shell on from her experiences so she's using personas to kind of um access experiences that she can't really do as herself you know mm. um that and then and then the theme of obsession that was another one but you know that I was very interested in exploring obsession and the intensity particularly of these sort of 
uh, early teenage friendships and then of um, uh, of later adult obsessions and sort of all of those things swirling around, you know, came together in the premise of Chloe to, um, and was sort of a way to explore all of that stuff, yeah. I want to jump ahead based on what you said because mm. I think you talked about Erin and how you looked at Erin very early in the process because of her, um, I'm, I'm, I'm quoting you here, so if it's a little mm. um, off, you let me know that um, in The Crown, the way that she played Princess Anne, that it wasn't quite, it's not quite an impression, but mm. it's finding that um, the sort of the basis or the, mm. the underlying sort of uh, persona and then kind of adapting mm. to it, becoming that other person. And that's part of the reason that you looked at her for mm. Becky Green and, and sort of grabbed onto her early in the process, you know? Yeah, it's, so she's, she, um, I saw her in Princess Anne was sort of very impressed by the performance. But then I also, what I often do when considering um, cast is I'll watch interviews with them because you get a mm. sense of who, what, what their kind of essence is when they're not acting as it were. Um, and she, she's so different, so, so different to her character in The Crown. And so immediately you go, okay, this is someone who's chameleonic in her nature and who can take on um, a very different um, sort of, presentation to who she is and do it very convincingly um and that's interesting you know that's interesting both because it means she can on a pragmatic level you know the character of Becky she she, she talks differently to when she's Sasha you know and mm. and there's a slightly different accent um she has a, she almost she just presents differently in lots of ways. So that's important from a pragmatic point of view that she can pull that off. But also I think it says something, um, you know, about her. Um, and in fact, when we had an early conversations, she she really related to the character of Becky um, for lots of reasons, as I do. Um, but, um, but I think, you know, certainly as an actor and someone who's taking on these different things and, and, and finding some sort of uh, personal fulfillment in, in, you know, playing out someone else's life. Of course, you know, that's, you know, she, she, you know, you can see how that relates to the character of Becky. And so I think she, she was like, I get this person. I get it. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. It's funny when I, when I'm, when I'm doing research, usually to try and figure out, um, you know, to prepare, I look mm. at social media. I, you know, and I, and I tried to look to your social media and of course, you know, befitting sort of the nature of the series, you don't have it. You're not I'm, there. I'm no, I'm not. I've disappeared. I, I, I used to have social media. Um, but uh, yeah, I, you know, I certainly was a doom scroller, you know, I was a TV yeah. doom scroller and I just, I always had quite a bad relationship with it. Um, uh, you know, not quite knowing you know, finding the posting thing really stressful. And then also the addictive nature of it just really, really worked on me. And so I quite quickly had to sort of put a boundary up, which was, you know, at times has been kind of shifting. And 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 in the last few years, it's just like, I can't, I can't be on it because it just, yeah. It's not actually because I'm so, it, it's because I have a terrible relationship with social media that I have to not be on it. <laughs> Yeah, so I, you know, so I look to your interviews. That's sort of yeah. all I have the basis of. Do you think social media, I mean, you talk about this a, or mm. hint at it a lot in your series. Do you think that's a persona for people? Do you think that's another sort of way that they can be chameleons? Mm, certainly, I do think that, yeah. I think no one, you know, no one can be on social media in a completely unfiltered way. I mean, of course, we're all... You know the the interesting thing I think the show tries to explore this a little bit like we're all always pretending in some way or putting on a um, putting on some form of persona. You know you're different with different people. You're you know you can try and be as authentic as you as you you know as you can, but there's always a sense in which we're in slight performance. But I think um, social media exacerbates that for sure because you're curating what you want to show. You're selecting. You're deciding what. You know, angle the cat photo is going to be whatever, and um, you're deciding what to put on and what not to put on. Um, and so then also it means we're consuming curated versions of other people's lives, which is why, you know, there's, it's no surprise that, I mean, it's no secret that social media can often be detrimental to, 
you know, can give people depression and anxiety because, you know, you're just constantly consuming the best versions of other people's lives without the, the, the negatives. And you're kind of going, why, why am I, why is my life not like this, you know? Um, uh, so yeah, for sure. Um, and I think that's why it's interesting, you know, in, in the show, Chloe obviously presents a certain way online and the whole, you know, a huge part of Becky's journey is uncovering the reality of what's going on underneath. Mm -hmm. So if I look to, you know, to interviews with you, mm. but also to the show, do you feel like the show in a way is revealing something about you? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, big time. <laughs> um, not in kind of obvious ways in the sense that it's not, um, there's nothing or very little in there where I can say, oh, this is something that, you know, literally happened or whatever. But but um, but I think that for me, writing is one of the most uh, rev um, exposing <laughs> things you can do um, because, you know, you're putting in uh, every character in the show. I've I, there's a, a portion of myself in, um, you know, the, the things I'm interested in the way I see the world, the, the things I care about and the, you know, the, it, it's all in there. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, you know, the, I, I watch the show and I, I, I feel, you know, when I see, when I see the show, it, it, it feels incredibly exposing. And so that's the, that's the experience of putting stuff out into the world. It's kind of saying, this is a, this is a part of me. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. And interestingly, too, you, you've cast actors that I think appear very differently on the show than they do based on my experience with talking with them in real life. Mm, you know, yeah. very, very different. Mm. You know, on your show, you kind of uh, challenge the audience to say, who are you, who are you going to root for? Who's the hero here? Who isn't? Mm. And, you know, certainly with some of the characters that are, that are, you know, quite toxic or volatile, they seem like very nice people in real life. So is that a consideration that you're giving? Uh, yeah, I like to work with very nice people. I don't like to work with anyone who's an asshole. So definitely, um, can, but I think, you know, connecting uh, always in working out, you know, casting, for example, it's like talented people who are right for the part, but also for me, collaboration is a huge part of everything. And so, you know, you have conversations and it's like the people you really connect with and can talk about, um, you know, can can work with and 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 bounce off of those are the people I want to work with. And so it, it so happens that we kind of, um, you know, uh, put together a just incredibly wonderful group of people to work with. Um, and I think that all of, you know, all of them, I would say, see themselves in the characters that they're playing. Mm -hmm. Now, in the same way that I see myself in all of the characters, because I wrote all of the characters, you know, but but that's not, to say I would do, you know, n n <laughs> hopefully Erin would never infiltrate the life of her, um, you know, dead friend. Um, but, but it's the the stuff underneath, you know. It's like what's what why is even though the the behaviours may be extreme or it may be heightened versions of things, the 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 thing at the core, I think, all of us relate to that, and it's the way for me. What's interesting as well with exploring complicated characters who challenge your sympathies who are toxic or um you know do unjustifiable things is that you're you get to look at a sort of extreme version of things that are in all of us and you and actually sort of ask difficult questions rather than kind of going like look at this character over here who has nothing to do with any of us um <laughs> you know it lets it lets us all off the hook in a way i think these are all like really human um, characteristics that are interesting to look at um, and what you do is you you kind of blow them up you know you you um, make them more extreme maybe so as to 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 really investigate them but the core at the heart you know the, the core sorry of of it is something that that and and I do believe that for an actor to really give a great performance I think they have I mean as, that's my sense in my experience they have to click in and find mm. a, a way in that's from themselves you know it's like this is this is how I relate to this yeah even if it's the maybe the alternate version of or the you know the yes. version of you the shadow version of you perhaps 
that's a great way to put it. Yeah, the shadow, I mean, the shadow is something I'm deeply interested in generally. And I think, you know, to, to, to take your shadow and to go, okay, what's the, what's the, the, the kind of uh, blown up heightened version of this is a way to make peace with it and to understand it. And hopefully therefore to, for it to have less power, you know, um, yeah. I promised that I would ask you about the sound design for <laughs> the show. In many ways, it's it's such a strong um, work. You're such a craftsperson. Um, I've noticed. I covered another series just recently, The Girl Before, which also had um, shot mm. in Bristol, and mm. that setting as well informs mm. the show greatly. You know, I, and I almost wouldn't expect it. It mm. it's almost like you you took. What was around you and and that informs the show quite differently so mm. what are your considerations when it comes to sound design to the look of the show to mm. the aesthetic to the feel of it mm. great oh that's yeah that's such a great question thank you the the sound um was hugely hugely important and it's funny it's the first time i've um gotten a chance to talk about it so the um, uh it was right in the scripts already it's funny I don't I haven't always had that approach necessarily but for this particular story for some reason the sound was always always at the forefront of the thinking it was I think for a couple of reasons one because it's such a deep dive into someone's mind and I think that the subjectivity of the experience that we were trying to create right which is that you feel like you're with Becky rather than that you're watching Becky um uh, a, a way to do that is basically to 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 create a soundscape that's that's subjective rather than you know more kind of a, a sort of traditional objective sound design would say okay this is the place that we're in this is how it sounds and this is you know uh and you're kind of making it sound like um like reality right whereas what we were doing was we were um saying what what does Becky how, how does Becky's mind function right now and how are we using sounds to tell that story um and then it also relates back to the other thing that you mentioned I think which is Bristol and the sea and the coast generally mm -hmm. the sense of place you know um and I think that the the the, the environment is a huge kind of is almost yeah not to be a cliche but it's a, sort of another character in the show um and also it relates back to the memories that she has right and so sound is also again I think very useful when when it's talking about memories or expressing memory um and uh, and yeah and in particular how it relates to um uh the, the the sense of place you know particularly the coast and all the memories that she has with um uh, with Chloe there and then and then the imaginations of you know Chloe on cliffs all of that stuff and so with I would say almost everything so from sound to music to cinematography um we, we that 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 concept of the subjective experience of Becky was the, was the sort of blueprint or the the organizing principle of how we um you know uh, of how we made the show so we were always going how do we get into Becky's head um, and that means from from the cinematography so you know um, early on in the show we we split the kind of the camera language between when she was Becky and it was mainly all handheld and quite loose and quite um, uh, uncontrolled and then when she's Sasha um, we use much more controlled presentational in a sense camera language right so uh, all on you know steady cam and sticks locked off sticks or um and uh and then that starts to blur as it goes uh you know as her own sense of <laughs> fragmented self starts to um you know emerge so um but then you know that was a sort of quote unquote not rule but a, a kind of um yeah, principle, but we also just in, more intuitively, we're going, okay, how, how's she feeling right now? What, what, what are we trying to, how, how do we make this feel like what it is to be her? Which, you know, it's all shot subjectively, you know, in any situation you're with her. So you're always on her most so, so often. And then you're showing, you know, you're seeing what she sees from her point of view. Um, and you're kind of trying to, you know, both in terms of the lenses that you're using in the, 
um, and the, the camera movement and all of that, trying to convey the state of mind that she's in. And then that goes all the way through to, to sound and music. We're scoring, uh, sorry, we're sound designing what is, you know, if, if she's hearing something, we're going to zone into it as she hears it. If she's, zoned, if she's not there, if she's in her own mind, suddenly we're, the, you know, the environment's disappearing. Um, there, we also kind of used the so um, the sound designer is called James Hayday and he's a genius and so he, he we would also kind of use more subtle or, or more kind of abstract sound design to kind of get into you know moments of anxiety kind of soundscapes that are that are abstract you know that aren't literal to what's happening but that are trying to get in and then Will Gregory, who was the composer, also a genius, mm -hmm. um, he he would talk about um, he'd talk about scoring her scoring Erin's face. <laughs> so he'd he'd watch the scene and wow, okay, so this is what she's doing, and this is how we, um, and yeah, and we'd always kind of it, it was trying not because you know sometimes particularly if something's like in the genre of thrillers, you might you're scoring often you know the tension that's kind of externally put onto what's happening we never wanted to do that it was always like no no no. we're scoring what she's experiencing so we're not saying to the audience this is going to go badly unless that unless that's what she thinks you know so, so it was more like if she's anxious we're anxious if she's um you know uh yeah whatever mood she's she's in we're trying to um to kind of uh to express that musically um, so that hopefully, particularly for a character who is so challenging to the sympathies of the audience and who does all these things that are kind of crossing with many ethical boundaries, we're, we're just trying to say, okay, we're trying to, you start maybe going, who is this person and kind of judging her, but as, the, as, as you kind of experience that um, way of telling the story, which brings you closer, you know, you can, you, until hopefully you, you go, okay, I get, who this person is and I'm experiencing it with her, which is not to say that you're justifying or, or kind of make it, saying it's all okay, but you're going, okay, this is what it's like to be Becky now. You take from that what you will. What we're trying to show you is the experience of a person um, and be with her, you know. Um, and also that allows the kind of unreliable narrator thing as well, right? Mm. Which is that when, when what she, or not so much, un, but, but you know, whatever it is that she believes at that point hopefully we believe you know so when she has a theory about chloe that's where we're taken to you know we're kind of and so the the, the kind of subjective images as well will shift and there's a lot of these like recurring visuals of like the phone call from chloe or the images from social media that she conjures to life or the the imaginations on the cliff that shift that come to life and change mm. each time depending on what becky's sort of state of mind is <laughs> this where yeah. I stand. Yeah. This is kind of like where I stand right now because <laughs> I've watched your show and I've interviewed mm. for your show. I've thought about your show and my impression mm. keeps changing about what it is and what it means. And mm. you know, the more you talk about the unreliable narrator, did I even know what I saw? I had a theory one of your characters might even be an apparition or a ghost. I'm not even sure. Mm. Yeah. And, and maybe not the one you think either. Um, what if, which one? Which <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> well, when you have an American in a British, uh, primarily, you know, um, uh, and doesn't seem to be doesn't seem to be a reason why it's an American, other than you know why not? Um, yeah. So what, what have been the reactions for you? You know, you when you put you put this show out into the world, and you're about to do it again, mm. and mm. people, uh, from what I've seen, and you know, you don't doom scroll for it or or look on social media or just maybe look for the reactions but people have really interesting interpretations what have been some of the reactions that you've really um that have stuck with you mm. i don't know i uh, yeah i don't know that there have been but I, I don't know specifically but i think what i've found the yeah the the reaction to be like one of the most for well people's interpretations and thoughts about the show to be the most one of the most fulfilling aspects of having it out there because I think it is as you say it's open to interpretation in different ways you can you you can sort of um have a perspective on 
both the reality of what happened exactly on, but also on, I think the character's motivations are all in this sort of complicated gray area, you know, where they're, it, yeah, it's complex and it's sometimes contradictory and they're all messy, you know, complex people. And so hearing, you know, how, what people, you know, why, why the parents behaved the, the way they did, yeah. what, who Richard was, what, who, mm -hmm. in fact, who Elliot is, uh, you know, the, the true nature of the, you know, um, of the relationship between Chloe and her friends, exactly, you know, all of these different things, I think, are sort of rich for discussion. And I think that just, that side of it, just hearing all of that is just so incredibly uh, exciting and fulfilling because it's, you know, you, it, it, it's so wonderful to feel like we've made something that then is out there for, that has its own life that people can talk about and see different. And I think it, for, for me, that's interesting that it is something that's, you know, that isn't sort of, it, it's it's not so simple that you just go, okay, I got it. You know, it's like, ah, I feel it's more this or I feel it's more that. And also then it raises lots of questions that are interesting to, to talk about and yeah I just love that so I'm I'm very scared for it to come out here but <laughs> but um but I'm also looking forward to sort of yeah seeing seeing people's yeah as you say interpretations and takes on things yeah I really enjoyed hearing from you I, I say that a lot but in this case I I, <laughs> I mean it on another level because you've so many interesting ideas and the show continues to fascinate me and I just wanted to say thank you Thank you, and thank you for your like really sort of thoughtful and insightful questions. Because that's I appreciate you thinking so deeply and and uh, and brilliantly about the show. And uh, thanks for talking about sound. That's just so exciting. <laughs>